Welcome and thanks for stopping by again to the channel everybody. Here's my first tutorial by popular request. It's how to make decals. Okay then, so before you start out making your own decals, I'm going to run through a few things you're going to need. First of all, obviously, it's the paper itself. It comes in either laser or inkjet, depending on what type of printer you're going to use. And it also comes in either white or clear. Again, depending on the project you're going to use, you need to choose your paper accordingly. Secondly is the printer itself. Now I've got high-end printers and I've got low-end printers for the different commercial design work that I do. And honest to God, I always use my cheap 40 quid desk jet, which is about five years old. I run remanufactured cartridges through it. It's all about the settings, so you don't need a really expensive printer. You're going to need some scissors. I use these modeling scissors, but you can get some good quality um, little nail scissors from discount stores, which work equally as well. So you need some of them. A decent blade. I use a surgical scalpel blade so I can get into all the fine details. You need one of them. A set of tweezers for maneuvering the decals around on the model once you've finished. A pencil, if you're going to use the old fashioned method of drawing out and plotting out where the decals go. A ruler for any straight edge work. A set of these really handy helping hands. When you come to do some of the really tricky race liveries and cars with lots and lots of decals on, these are invaluable for holding it and keeping your hands working elsewhere. So I recommend some of them. A small container to put some water in so you can put your decals in there depending on what size depends again on what size decals you're making in the first place so you're going to need a tub and then finally you're going to need some clear lacquer i use automotive lacquer i also use clear coat modeling lacquer which you need an airbrush for Depending on the expense, and if you're just starting out, this isn't a necessity. All the faffing around with an airbrush, it's a maybe, a possibility for the future. It does yield good results, but 99% of the time, I always use automotive lacquer. And there's an extra, I'll go on about this later on, there's some little product called Microset, which is a setting solution and it helps soften the decals, but I'll go on about that later on, that's an extra. So there you have it. So first things first, it's time to make yourself a cup of tea and do a little bit of research. It may seem like an obvious thing to do, but I've done it in the past where I've started to make a car and I'm doing it on a wing and a prayer and it doesn't particularly make good results. So I tend to look at places like Pinterest and Google Images and make a little folder and fill it full of reference images, not only to help with the design, but to help with the placement when I come to do the car. I then go on to do some measurements, basic measurements of the actual car. But in this instance, I was a little bit lucky. I had a set of old 124th decals from a Tamiya kit that I made in, in 124th scale. And a little bit easier and quicker to do, I use this as a reference to draw around. You can use image software like Photoshop, but it's best to use a vector drawing package. I use Adobe Illustrator mainly for my job so it's the industry standard. I don't want to open up the floodgates as to a big debate on what's the best packages. If you do use other design packages by all means put them in the comments field and let other people know about it but I use what's considered to be the industry best to make a vector image and all a vector image is is predetermined points that you draw you can expand and contract without distortion unlike using pixels in an image. You can come back to it and modify it. It's very, very accurate. And you can obviously choose the correct colours, the Pantone references and all the all the rest of it. So all I tend to do is draw out each individual part. All the years ago when I started doing this, I used to make all the old logos, all the um, name plates. But as time's gone on, you can pretty much do a, 
a Google search on any free vector logos, vector logo, should I say, and download them virtually free anywhere nowadays. So a lot of the work I did in the past is rendered useless now. Well, it's not to me, but you can get it pretty easy nowadays. And what I'll do is I'll print it off on a piece of paper first to start, just to see what the first off looks like without wasting it on any decal paper. And just basically go around, cut them up and offer it up to the car, see if it's a hit or a miss. 90% of this car was pretty good. This part, as you can see, is way off the mark. It's a lot smaller, even in this scale, to what the Tamiya version was. And you will always get that variance, that difference. So what I'll do is another method of sketching around the area. I have actually sketched around cars before now if I'm doing a full body and I haven't got any reference to go off. But all I'm doing is just sketching around the area on some tracing paper the shape that I need of which I'll basically scan back into the computer take some extra measurements just to be double sure that I've got it right and then again do the same process and draw around it and as you can see already on that scale side by side it's probably a good 70% bigger than the original reference that I drew around. I don't intend to give you a lessons on how to use the design software as there's plenty of other YouTube videos out on there on the subject. So I'm just simply speeding up and showing you the process I go through. And one may say it may be a little bit overkill for this scale, but nevertheless, it yields far better results. And when you're finally happy, it's time to do the printing. And this is the next important, or probably the important part of it. Most printers always default to text and images. And what you want to do is go into them settings and reference just the images. And what that'll do is it'll create multiple passes. It'll go a lot slower in this print mode. But what it'll do is pick up all the fine detail and all the lettering, all the really tiny parts. And then what you want to do is pick the best paper for the job. And again, you may have to play around with this. I always find, obviously, any of the glossy ones work the best. But there is premium ones. There's glossy um, Epson ones or HP ones or whatever it is printer you use. And it's a matter of a fine balance of finding which works best for you. And then, as you note, notice, it will take a lot longer to print, even though you haven't got many decals to do. But the results you'll get is a very fine, accurate print. What I tend to do as well is print two sets out for reasons of mistakes, cutting and all the rest of it. And then what I tend to do after this is coat them in clear lacquer to seal in the ink. If you don't do this at this stage, when you drop them in the water, obviously it'll just bleed all over the place and it's rendered useless. A few light sprays on a light coat to start with and I tend to wait five minutes and do another two even three passes and 15 minutes 20 minutes is all you need and you're good to go. So I want to actually cutting all the decals out now cut as close as you possibly can but don't cut into the actual decal itself. I'm using transparent decal by the way at the moment the paper. On the white ones you will have a white border all the way around so bear that in mind if you're printing onto white paper. But all I'm simply going to do is cut as close as I can without cutting into the actual print itself and then work my way around the car slowly putting them all on. Now Microset, the, it's a solution which softens the decals. It can make the area more slippy, so you can manoeuvre it around. I don't tend to do that that often. I tend to do it this way, after I've put the decal on, and then blob some of this on. And the results you get afterwards, if you haven't used this before, it softens it that much. 
the decals all fall into all the nooks and crannies of the car and it's like you've literally sprayed on your decal and the results that you'll get once it falls into all those little areas of fine detail again is a difference between a good finish and a bad finish with all the decals that hang over the edge and collect all the dust. Now I always use a set of blunt nose tweezers to place the decals on the car. Some people have mentioned this in some of my other videos as to why it may tear the decals. I honestly haven't had a set of decals rip in 20 odd years of making them so I still use this method. I don't like using the cotton bud q-tip method as other people have suggested I, I just prefer this way again using the same lacquer or you can use the model clear coats if you've got an airbrush at this stage once you've let the decals dry for an hour or two it's time to spray the coats of lacquer and again I do two to three light coats I do a very light first coat to tack it all in and then a second and third coat to gloss it up other than that that's all there is to it this is how i've been making them all these years it's by no means the only way you can do them so thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video until next time